Hey everyone, Jexy here. Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe, this way you know when I upload new videos. For those of you who tune in every video, welcome back. Thanks so much for watching. Um, this video, I thought we would discuss the concept of balance and how balance plays a huge role in a successful recovery program. So balance is something that you see people struggle with inside and outside of recovery. It's not a topic that is solely for those in recovery, but I think in recovery we find that balance is something that we have to work on pretty early on in order to be successful in our recovery program. So, you know, what does that mean? Well, it was funny because I posted the question on Twitter like, hey, what's the hardest part of balance in your recovery? And I was actually surprised at some of the responses I got because some people viewed balance and, and how to be successful with balance in a very different way than I have. So for me, balance was always how I manage my time. Um, it fairly simply, you know, like I go to meetings, I am a mom, I have to take care of the house, I work. So there's all these different aspects of my life. And so balance is how I make sure that I give the right amount of time to each of those things. Especially as a mother, kids take a lot of time. They need time just to be loved. They need dinner. They need breakfast. They need to get ready for school. So there's a lot of things that I have to put first. Uh, and not to say I put anything in front of my recovery. My recovery is always number one. But in regards to the time, I have to manage to make sure that I'm not ignoring other responsibilities to, to take part in my recovery. So when I first got clean, very early on in my first 90 days, I spent way more time at meetings than I probably did anything else. As those of you know, I am a member of a 12-step recovery program. And although that is the program I use for my recovery, in these videos we kind of talk about everything. So I don't represent that program in any way. Just want to make sure that's clear. So what I did at the beginning in early recovery is I was really scared. It was really hard in early recovery and I was so afraid of failing. So I always felt comfortable in my car and I felt comfortable at meetings. So what I would do was is I started going to meetings that were a little bit far away and I would also get there really early. So if a meeting started at like seven, I would leave my house at like four. I would drive an hour. I would go eat dinner at like a fast food place and then I'd show up at the meeting early, like help sit up. And then I would make sure I was like the last one to leave and then drive the hour home. So I spent like a lot of time at meetings each evening and I did that like seven days a week. And luckily I had help with the kids. Their father stepped up at the time and, and really helped take care of them. And in early recovery, I needed to do that. I needed to spend that kind of time at meetings. I had a really hard time with just being a member of society, being a mom, like take, just regular stuff was really, really hard for me. So I found that by spending that kind of time at meetings, it gave me the opportunity to just breathe and like not worry about things and just focus on getting better. But as I spent more and more time in recovery and I had stayed clean for, you know, 90 days, six months, I found that the time I spent at meetings in, in the way that I had been was really no longer appropriate. And what it became was me going to meetings and spending this exorbitant amount of time on recovery related stuff so that I could ignore other responsibilities. So being a mom is hard and taking care of a house and working that stuff was hard, but it was easy for me to be at meetings. It was easy for me to drive. Those things didn't take the same kind of effort and it wasn't scary. So Although I did that at the very beginning, it got to a point where I had to limit myself. So I started picking, I picked like three days that I would go to meetings and sometimes I went to other ones, but I had like three scheduled meetings I would go to and it, that's actually kind of how I do it now. I have three meetings that I go to, two are during the day while my kids are at school and one is a weekend evening and my parents help watch the kids. But I do that because it's easier for me to schedule time around my recovery. Another thing that someone brought up in Twitter was about balance having to do also with how open they are about their recovery. And I thought that that was a good, a good point of view, right? So everybody in my life knows that I'm in recovery. They, they know I have a YouTube channel. They know I go to meetings and I'm very open about those types of things. 
But I came to think when this when this comment came that being not as open with people about being in recovery would probably make balance like a lot more difficult to have to tell people you can't do something because you have to go to a meeting if you're not openly sharing about your involvement in meetings or just basic things. If we're not open about our recovery, balance can be much more difficult. I have a lot of help and I also have found that one of the things I have to do is I have to be open to suggestion. I can't assume that I'm doing the right thing constantly because what may be working now, the same way like in my early recovery, where balance was about spending most of my time at meetings and then spending time with my family and like that was it. That was all I could manage. But as I got farther along, like now I have six and a half years clean. I can't spend five, six hours a day going to meetings and hanging out with other recovering addicts. That's just not realistic. So balance changes as my recovery changes, as my circumstances change. You know, you get a full-time job in recovery. Well, now you can't go to lunchtime meetings. Whatever it is, circumstances are just going to change. That's just part of life. So I found for myself that it was really important that I regularly reevaluate like the time that I'm spending and where I'm spending it and stay open-minded for and listen to people in my life who are offering suggestions. For example, if your partner is saying, hey, I feel like you're not spending enough time with me, I'm feeling very, you know, alone, or you're finding that you're not showing up at your kids' events like you used to, or perhaps it's the other way around. You realize that you're missing a lot of meetings and it's been a lot of time and you're not going to the meetings that you would normally go to. Whatever it is, life circumstances can change, especially when it's a big change in time, like getting a full-time job or having a child. These big changes can be very overwhelming as they are, and trying to manage time when we're not used to it can be really difficult. When you have a child, nobody, unless you're a mom or a dad, you have no idea what it's like time-wise to have a child. You're now up all night with a baby, you're exhausted, Trying to bring a baby to a meeting is is tough, right? And like a lot of meetings, <laughs> the meetings I go to, I make sure are super welcoming to people who have kids. Uh, I think that's really important. And the people who I uh, associate with in recovery also think that that's important. So, But I know that not all meetings allow that. Also, depending on what kind of recovery program you do, maybe your recovery program is more one-on-one -on -one treatment. Well, how are you doing that when you have your child? So that can really cause a lot of stress and it can cause you to back off. Look, when you have a few minutes of peace and quiet, you wanna take a nap, you don't wanna leave the house. So it can be very difficult to, to keep up with a recovery program when you have these big life changes. You know, you get a full-time job, you work until five o'clock at night, you come home, you have dinner, you're beat. You don't wanna leave the house to go to a meeting. So I think that by being open-minded and also not being so harsh on ourselves, when circumstances change, if you can't leave the house for your recovery as often as you would, maybe then the solution to that is you pick up the phone more, you call people more, you write more, you do something else to counteract the fact that you can't leave and go somewhere. I think there's a lot of ways in which we maintain balance. And I think what's important is that no area of our lives feels like it's being neglected. You know, like, are you, are you keeping up with basic health, right? Like, are you seeing your doctor? Are you taking showers? Are you, are you washing your clothes, right? Like those basic needs, are they being met? You know, are the people in your life feeling like they're getting to see you? It's very hard when people point out to us that we may be slacking in an area. I don't want to hear that I haven't called people enough. I haven't. I know that. But it's hard to hear. It's hard to hear when people point out our shortcomings. But the reality of it is if we don't listen to those things, we can't make positive changes. And for me, growing in recovery is about constantly taking suggestions, constantly reevaluating where I'm at and, and making those changes based on what's needed. Um, I know that there are a lot of difficulties in maintaining balance, but, and I don't think anybody does it perfect. There are times where I feel like I'm good. Like I've got the balance thing down, I'm good to go. And then, something happens, my kid joins the wrestling team and all of a sudden it's all thrown out the window because now I gotta go to matches and I've gotta make sure she has her gear cleaned and something small that's not even my change can really 
throw a wrench in the whole cycle. So constantly reevaluating, reaching out to other people, asking people how they did it. When you had a baby, how did you stay in recovery? When you moved, when you got a job, how did you do it? Accepting suggestions and help from other people who've been there is like the core of what recovery is. We can help each other because we know the feelings that come along with these big changes. We just have to ask and be open-minded. So that's kind of how balance works in my life. I would love to hear from you guys either on Twitter. And my Twitter, if you don't follow me there, is according to Jexie, just like it is here. Um, or in the comments, write down what what do you do for balance? How where do you struggle? Where do you do well? What would you what are you working on changing? Anything at all. I love having discussions with you guys in the comments after each video. It's really been great for me. And I appreciate your support so much. Again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's a great way for you to know when I upload videos. I upload every Tuesday and Friday, although not at any particular time. It totally depends on how the day goes. But um, yeah, thank you guys all for tuning in. And I have something I'm working on for Tuesday's video, which I'm hoping will be really interesting. It's going to be another reaction time one. Um, somebody sent me some great information via email, and I look forward to discussing it with you. So Thank you guys all again for being so amazing, and I will see you on Tuesday. Have a great day.